Fuck, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. This is definitely one of the best albums I've heard this year. And that's not me being biased. That's me just Whoa. strictly speaking from music. I feel the same way. I'm like, am I not? I'm thinking to myself, hold on. Am I not being critical enough? Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake 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 we're gonna do something a little different. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not yeah, because you guys don't really uh, probably have a good grasp on Australian hip hop scene. Um, and we're gonna do review Ali Belmont, the Ghost LP. Who's Ali Belmont? Who the fuck is Ali Belmont? And the Delivery Boy, who we've who had in this fuck studio. Who's the Delivery Boy? Who's a producer? Okay. And to introduce them, uh, first of all, disclaimer: we're friends with them. We've been to their show. I fucked him. <laughs> Sorry, E. It's out now. Sorry, Nikki. Uh, we've known yeah. them for probably a year plus. Yeah, a year plus. Definitely. Right. For their 5.5 um, um, 5. 5 EP. Yeah, with their 5.5 5 EP mm -hmm. and, and their, their second last uh, album. It's a continental um, champion. Which was very good. Enjoyed both, both it really a lot. Um, so we're friends with them. So we have a degree of bias with this review and reaction. So please understand that coming in. Um, it, it's hard to eliminate that. And the Australian hip-hop scene has been uh, pretty lacklustre for us. Well, how would you describe mm, it? You've been in it longer. The way... Well, I remember being younger... Younger? I remember being young and um, loving a lot of what Australian hip-hop people had to offer because it was a stage where it was like Bliss and Esso, Hilltops, Phrase, Mantra, and all them sort of artists sort of growing up that sort of period. And I, I loved a lot of that growing up. We got to a stage where it became stagnant for me because a lot of those artists were doing near the same thing different content but just same sort of sound same sort of uh i just in terms of like production was a big thing that was around the same but some of the voices and accents were just so damn similar yeah and so i got the stage where i just followed american hip-hop more and eventually mm -hmm. lost i don't even listen to pretty much any australian hip-hop anymore and then it took me to hear ali belmont's uh emeralds 96 track Ooh. which is like with that was at the 5.5 ep where i was just like this the fucking That's this. the first track we heard yeah. of them, right? That's the first the track first we heard track, of them. Yeah. Shout out to Chris Palmer for getting us onto that as well. Chris Palmer, he ran um he was the, the kind of helped us uh, with the the radio, but that's mm -hmm. from the radio days. Um he gave us the track and we were very impressed and then we just dived into them and then we did an interview with them. It's our first video on this very channel is interviewing them. Yeah, very first thing. Now well, the very first interview was Jungle Beats as well. Like we plan to do more, but at the moment this is what we get time to do. Exactly. Uh, so I think that gives a good introduction um, of who they are to us. And well, yeah, restored our faith in what we believe Australian hip hop can be. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with Australian hip hop that's already there. It's just we just don't. Well, we're just not a fan of that. Like a lot of people are fans, but that's why it's doing well. Yeah. Like shout out to AU Dollars, who's a media company who we definitely. If you want to get a de uh, get a good grasp of Australian hip hop, go AU Dollars. We'll we'll put it on the screen for you. Um, mm. Otherwise, Ali Beaumont, the Ghost LP. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pre-order is available now. We got a we got a, a copy of this album before it was released to the public, so you can pre-order it right now. Um, link in the description. Please support them. I, I know this shit. I expect this shit to be to be good. We've As heard do I. They, they haven't released anything bad. All right. Ever. But at the same time, we have to be one hundred percent transparent, and honest. If we do not like something, we have to. We gotta remember the since when have I since when have I ever not been honest? One hundred percent. I'm not afraid to shit on anyone. Especially today. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> they don't. All right, let's go. Uh, Ali Belmont, The Ghost LP, part one, outside. Let's fucking go. Oh no, he performed this live. Except he screams it. Yeah. 
I never go outside. 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 I never Mm. Off of the Ghost EP. Mm. LP! Mm. LP. Um, it was, that was very different here because I have heard that track before, but I heard it live. Yeah, we both did, yeah. We saw Ali live about a, about a month ago, and there's a big difference to this track live because live he screams it. He's like, yeah. What the fuck? Are we? Like, fucking, he, goes, he goes fucking crazy, he gets out in the audience, and like, so imagine that song with that same sort of ambience, but with huge amounts of aggression and passion. I'm not saying they had no passion there then, but just like then. So hearing it in this form, Completely different. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I love the atmospheric beat. Mm, the beat is on point. It's a very somber, a kind of dark way to start an uh, an album or mm. a LP. Um, but yeah, that's no, fucking dope track. Repetitive man. hook, like just. But I wonder if that's gonna play. A, yeah, I wonder if that's gonna play a part in the album because it, it reminds me a lot of um L sweatshirts. I don't like shit. I don't go outside because right. the whole concept of that album was right. I fucking hate people. I'd rather just stay in my fucking space and just be absorbed in it. Because Ali has said before in other tracks, uh, especially on Incontinental Champion, there's like a, a part where he screams like, I, I think it's just how he fucking hates people. Right. Yeah, he definitely... Uh, so I think he's just in that mind frame of like, fuck people, I'd rather just be in my area with the people I know, with the people I love, just with the music I love. Okay, let's see how that continues on. Yeah. yeah. Track two, Kilo Downs Reserve, which is where they're from. It's the suburb where they're from. It's what they represent, it's their label, it's everything. Ooh. He did this line as well. He, Happy Road, we've Happy Road too. track a track's dope i think i remember ali saying at the um at the concert because he did this one at his, at his concert as well i remember saying i want this to be our anthem i think that's what he said okay I think it was this track here i think he wanted this to be like the keeler the keeler to down sort of anthem for the moment that definitely like, like, could like representing be. Re representing oh. his area representing his crew i'm pretty sure that was what this track meant just correct me if i'm wrong mate <laughs> but i think i remember him saying that and also very different again because Live, a lot of aggression. This one, in terms of the tone of the album, real chill. And there was no auto tune live, so that's <laughs> no, no, no. And shout out to E2 on the on the guitar. On the there. guitar solo. The guitar with the like those drums kicking back and forth, bruh, that was so fucking smooth. You don't hear that being done in hip hop often. Um, not today's hip hop, that is. You don't Little hear... Wayne tried to bring it back. Huh? <laughs> Little Wayne tried to bring it back. <laughs> oh yeah, with his. Rebirth! Yeah, Rebirth. Right. He's wearing a guitar on the cover. Yeah, and then Young Thug did the same. Beautiful Thug again. Except Young Thug had the guitar upside down. Let's just talk about that real quick. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, I think the combination they've had with E playing the guitar in the production and then Ali rapping uh, has always been really well done. Um, but this one, again, continuing with somberness. I don't know how I feel about the auto-tune. Um, that, but that's me in general. I, I just... I think it's hard to pull off auto tune and rapping um, or hip hop. But you didn't mind it? 
No, I like the I like the effect. I'm a big fan of these days. I'm a big fan of voice voice distortion and auto tune. Like I like I never was massive on it, but like in the last sort of few years, I've just really, especially for the last year, like like with um uh, Rockhampton with a lot of the added effects there. With some of the ones where you were like it's too much for me, it was like I love that experimentality. Experimentality. Yeah. <laughs> There definitely ain't a word. Experimentality! Uh, Hello? Track three, part two, one. Ali, man, what the fuck are you doing? Stop being a fucking bore. I can't pick up your phone. Who's <laughs> I don't know this yet. It's spooky. Uh... He trying to calm me down. Feel like I'm a snow right now. distortion yeah i like that mm. definitely definitely on that one mm. i know you want to say something <laughs> well i fucking love that track I thought the, the spookiness, like you said, was a perfect way to describe mm. it. The way it started off, and then the drums kick in, his voices go from like soft to the distortion, and then when he went solo and started screaming, and then with that last bit at the end, fucking dope, man. You know what? That's it. That's it. I thank you. And that's why I need, I need someone to kick me off. <laughs> um, the, the, the structuring of the song made sense, The right? structuring was beautiful. We often have songs like... That the structuring of the song or the album just doesn't make sense. You know, there's no real high or low. It sometimes stays the same the whole time. But this one, I don't know, made sense to me. I think it was that, that was an intelligent way to structure that. Mm. No. And how it brought your energy up and then back down real quick. Mm. They could have, and the way they cut off as well, I wanted more, man. <laughs> I thought maybe they were going to bring it back up again. But like, it's just like, nah, man, I'm done. <laughs> track, uh, track four, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Whoa! Let's get it. I'm just sitting on the hill, watching jet engines fill into the vortex in my head. Everybody manipulated dead. Call me Dr. Phil, just a different context. Real life more complex. Can't let them see me sweat. Stay dry like cortex. It's my time. Tell these so keep it. I know I see you. Come on, come on, come on. Fuck the place we kill your idol like the world on fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire,
That's the best track so far. Bro, that's one of the best tracks he's made. Yeah, I was gonna say that's, that's, that's one probably of one of the best tracks he's made. That's one of the best that's tracks. Up there with, that's up there with Emeralds. <sighs> oh, fucking hell! Just what? when you think the track's over, over they they switch it up, they switch up the beat, and then you think it's over again, and it just comes back in with another last. But they come the in and the production switch up. Like if you notice on that lava, before the last verse, you hear the drums were different, something was different, mm. so it hits you in the face differently. And they added an extra bass as well. Right, that's what mm. I mean. That was and fucking dope. In the middle, there was this empty space. There was a kind of this quiet lull. The boom, 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 boom. I don't. Do you remember it? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you can buy that. 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 What the fuck is that? That noise? Yeah, but I love it. Play it again. Might be able to catch on to it. It's like. Fine, it's like mechanical, but it's distorted. It's got, it's got bass behind it as well. It's all fucked up, but I love it. I Yo, really yeah, love that's that. Dope. that I'm like, sh- shout out Eltherius on there, man. Yeah, I'm sure he created that from scratch. Ooh, that was fucking insane. I love that song. Yeah, definitely the best track so far. That's at this point the top ten track of the year for me. I'd be up dancing, but. I've had diarrhea, so I can't really dance. You know, you gotta keep the gut. If I if I dance, no shit, will shit. <laughs> For real though. For real, man. I can't really. I can I can stand up, but if I start moving to the track, I'm afraid I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> so but you know what? If you can make me dance while feeling like this, then you're doing something right. I guess. Oh, shit. Exactly. So don't take offense if, if he ain't dancing wearing Yo, these. If I shit myself to your music, that's a compliment. <laughs> Um, track five. Have we heard this smoke? Yeah, it's a single they did. They released a video for it as well. Oh yeah, we heard this smoke. This one's good. Yeah. All I know is when the smoke coming from. All I know is where the smoke coming from. All I know is where the smoke coming from. 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 Is lately I've been smoking a lot. Lately I've been smoking a lot. I like that better this time than the first time I listened to it, I'll tell you that. I've heard that song about a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, man, I smashed the shit out of it. How do you feel about it, then? I love it. Yeah? I love it. I love the um, the ambience of it. I love the guitar going through there. I just love the, the low-key, sort of, like, non-sort of energetic way of going about it. It's just, it's the smoker's anthem, man. It's people that use it in their lifestyle. It's yeah. a fucking dope tune. Probably a lot of people can relate to it. Yeah, I fucking love that song. I played that song a lot this year. It's probably my like twenty most played songs this year, I think. Track six, uh, part three, Mister Hick. You ask it. Hickenuba. Hickenuba? No, see, it's not. The whole title isn't in here. What did he say, Mister Hicker? What? Mister Hick. Do you remember? Nah, man. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Mister Hicker. Hicker something. <laughs> Oh. 
Mr. Hickenbottom. Mr. Hickenbottom. Straight up, that sounds like something off a of goblin. Three hours. You heard Tyler the Creator's goblin? One of those... Not enough to... Yeah, but the, I feel you. I the feel eeriness, you. Those, those drums, like every... Everything about that, everything about that production to me was like screaming Tyler the Creator Goblin. That's it. That's a good comparison. I want to know if he had a had that in thought when he made it, or maybe he just was just making it and thought this is fucking. Perfect. I'm getting dark, spooky Halloween type vibes. That's, like, one, that's one of my favorite tracks so far. It ain't, yeah. it ain't on Jake Gyllenhaal's level, of course, because that track goes mad. But like, that's that sort of production is like fucking what I love, and just Ali, how he just. Like start a slow on there and just gradually like build his aggression yeah. into it as well. He like, didn't keep the same flow. Exactly, and just that that instrumentation didn't need to change too much because it was already fucking just. But you notice it actually did. It and did. It had this weird bell sound that was yeah, like sick. A, it reminded me a bit of um that track that Absol did um something threatening nature. Okay. Do you remember the one with the bell? I think so. Was yeah. Bob Christ still trying to flower Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> That's a dope that one. song. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. It reminded me a bit of that beat a bit, just in terms of the when the bell would come in and some of the drums too. But lyrically, okay. Ali is continuing with the theme. He he has been. I can't. What what do you? How would you describe the theme? It's dark. It's like very, maybe even dark depressive. Person. Yeah, I think it's also to do with um. That's a good way to put it as well. I'm thinking of a good word for it. Definitely angry. Angry is a word there. And just how he constantly mentions about how just how he hates people. I think he gets in certain moods where he just doesn't want to be around anybody and just is angry all the time. But deep, but, you know, but then what we see is probably this just fun loving, just really it's like awesome dude to be around. Right, like, so this is the dark side of him yeah, coming out in music. I think. Right. I mean, other people have probably seen this side, but we ain't seen it except when he performs live. Right. But even then he's enjoying himself. I think a lot of people could relate to this in some small ways. Yeah, that's definitely probably my second favorite track. Track seven, uh, Cobain. That's what you're going to plan. That's what you're going That's work. Hey, I just want to be happy. Does that make me selfish? The world's even been alive. I break this bitch a little bit for shellfish. I'm full of anti-social. I'm a post. I'm a little bit lost in the door. Tell the world about the ball. Makes it open. I need the car. It's a joke. Once again, the production really oh, is shining. I was gonna on say that same thing. Yo, the da, 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 it's hypnotizing. Da, but I was about to say the same thing as well. An absolutely hypnotizing beat. Like, we weren't even like, I was just like lost, man. One hundred percent. That's why we we're just sitting here vibing. We couldn't even really be moving. It was just. He really... is getting better as a producer. Like, like that's. They're, some they're fucking... both getting better, man. Oh, one hundred percent. But yeah, fucking the delivery boy, fucking hell, man. That's that's an absolutely amazing beat right there. There's no reason you couldn't get any great hip hop artist in our fucking top hundred Billboard charts, put him on this joint, and make a hit. Who would you like if you were to name three rappers right now? Pusha T. Pusha T on there. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's beautiful. He'd sound great on there. That's his type of shit. Um. You think Tyler would? Mm, he would, but I don't think he'd suit Vince it. Vince Staples? Mm, once again, I don't think. Like, these rappers would all sound good in it, but I'm thinking, like, okay, okay, I okay. just try and envision what they'd sound good on. I'd probably go. Mm, mm, it's more Danny Brown. Danny Brown would sound fucking awesome on that. I think he would. I think with his, like, his low voice, if you've heard his low voice, like, and just building it up to his high pitched voice and that would be fucking mental. That's just me. And yeah, but, maybe like, and I think, and then Ali's rhyme scheme is, I was like, but before I was thinking, like, Ali, with one thing you can prove, maybe, to me, his rhyme scheme, like, his intelligence behind uh, how he um, creates his lyrics mm. and the mean, double meanings, double entendres of his, of his lyrics, you know, just listening to 444, Jay-Z's the master at that, so it's like, you know, maybe taking bits from that and trying to improve his rhyme scheme in little ways, but then this track, I felt like it kind of re-upped me. I'm like, oh no, you actually... You actually got it a little bit. You got it a little bit. I do have a little criticism for this track. Please. I felt that towards the end when he repeated the, I feel like, 
I feel like Kurt coming out from beneath the dirt. Yeah, and, yeah. You know how you repeat that line four times? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, kind of like, it reminded me a bit when um, Kanye in that track about, oh, what track was it that Kanye does where he repeats the line like five Pablo? times? I'm a swallower. See, there's leaders and, and there's followers, followers, but I'd rather be a dick than a swallower. Is it New Slaves? Dun, dun, oh, you're right. It is New dun, Slaves. Dun, 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 yeah, it's New Slaves. Dun, dun, dun. You know you're Kanye better than me. Like towards when Kanye does those lines, I lose interest. Because okay. it's like cool, I know you're trying to drive the point home, but you've driven it home a lot. Like real people listen to music will hear it from one or two. I don't, I don't mind a second time for emphasis or a third or fourth if there's like if it's really powerful, if there's like a lot behind it, but I don't know, I felt like there could have been more there at the end. So that, that's my only criticism with the track. Just right. that like that line was repeated too much. A small one. But fuck yeah. That beat was fucking mental and Everything else about that from Ali was dope. Track 8, part 4, Blackbeard. Sonically, it's the most. Um, well, actually, you can even draw like you can say it's very death grips like in a way. I was gonna say like death, like death. I don't know. Okay, it's not death the same metal, as... metal, screamo. It's like it's aggressive. It's not traditional hip hop. I just meant the way like death grips like have constant production switches, oh, okay, voice okay. alterations, like that too. Because there's three of them. Yeah, I fucking love this track. At the start, where it's just like with the fucking guitar and just lacing so over. I'm like, so what the. Fuck? It's where a beautiful the, day. Where the fuck did this come from? I need a fucking choir. <laughs> and then the, the switch up, so tribal, would like sound like like a didgeridoo with some, with some fucking yeah. good wooden blocks in the background. Some frogs. Fucking dope. And then, then the bass kicks in, the vocals change, back to that. Like this is might be one of my favorite tracks as well. Production wise, it's definitely up there. The delivery boy is just showing just how what? fucking how fucking yeah. good he is. Why he's one of the best producers and sound I engineers mean, in Melbourne. We ain't even finished this album yet, and I just want to give this album to so many people and just spread it so much because I feel like for the talent that, that he has, he deserves to be heard by so many more people. Because right. this this right here is just so much fucking talent, man. Both of them, they just come together and fucking mesh hell. so well. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, we ain't done yet. Hold up, hold on. Two hold tracks up, left. Man. I'm about to bust my load. I, I really like that track. I loved how it changed, switched up multiple times, kept it very engaging. Track nine, Green Horse. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, love. Spark my spliff and search a bliss fire. Breathe and I sit high. Get faded, get gone, get zoned, get lit, get ripped. Hey, us. I'm on up, on up, get higher, 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 higher. Try again. I'm on up, on up, get higher, 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 higher. I'm on up, on up, get higher, 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 higher. This one made me fire, 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 fire. That's what I'm feeling when I'm making my own. As he emerged from the swamp, eyes red like rubies. Sitting on the green horse, I look ill. Staring into the eyes of someone who lives for the kill. Oh, wow. His hand gripped tight around the side. It was running wild from the side.
I love like nice. green horses, green faces, black oh. faces. It's like four tracks in one. Mm. Pass these green horses! Here we go. Pass these green horses! Passy! Passy! Fucking hell. Is that it? There's a reason he left five seconds of silence on that last track on that track right there. There is? Just for the last five seconds, just silence. Huh. Really hit home. All I see is green horses. What does that mean? Well Green is empty. He was saying that like he was coming in on a pale horse. He goes, they yeah. came riding in on a green horse. And the green represents uh, being I guess being ill or being envious. Yeah, green traditionally envy, yeah. So maybe it's something to do with um, people being envious of him or maybe him being envious of them. I'm not sure. Because he said that I always see his green horses, he says, always see his green faces, always see his black crowds and always see his red, red. I didn't hear what he said after that. Just, Powerful track though. There's a little bit there. Yeah. I, have to, I have to get dive back into that. Wait, is that all or is there more? There's one more track. Oh, yes. That's a really good track. It's a hell of a good track. The one thing I'm getting from this album, like we're not finished yet, but it's definitely... I can safely say it's probably the best piece of work. One track left. Man, this, like, fucking hell. It's just, this is exactly the sort of fucking production I love and exactly the sort of fucking energy from, like, the low tempo to the high that Ali is bringing. Like, fucking hell, man. I, it's so fucking Oh, good. and the robotic, that's the thing. It At started the start, off, the robotic I have not heard that. We've listened to a lot of albums on camera, off camera, in the last couple of years. I ain't heard that in a long... I, I don't remember hearing that. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I heard something like that. I mean, I probably it have, but like not for a while. Very rare. Very unique. To experiment in that way. Mm. Just to point that out. Fuck yeah, that ending's so fucking beautiful. Last track mm. is called 27 Emerald Green. Ooh, get them emeralds back out, boy. This for Hendrix. This for Jim. This for Janice. This for Amy. That's the Mary Jane For something for the pain Get it for both their stains Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it Look, I put her on my grandma, I'm gon' be a legend I put her on my grandpa, I'm gon' be a legend Just pray, just pray, I make it past 27 I put her on job, put her on my mind Just pray, just pray Just pray That's why it's called the Ghost Ape LP. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be a ghost, because it's 27. 27. There you go. Who's Janice? The 27 Club. Because I picked up Amy, Amy Winehouse, then obviously Kurt Cobain, Jimi Hendrix. The only Janice I know is Janice Jackson, but she's alive. Yeah, I know. It'd be someone. But a lot of people rip, rip into us in the comments about who it is. But to wrap it up, what a great way to end the album. Bruh. What a and fucking great way to wrap and to it like, up. And to explain that the title of the EP right at the end and echo it. Don't want to be a ghost. Don't want to be dead by 27 because mm -hmm. you want to be a legend. Mm -hmm. Don't want to join the 27 club. That's inspirational. He said for his grandma, for his grandpa. That's a fucking... It's a fucking really good track. Fuck, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. It's definitely one of the best albums I've heard this year. And that's not me being biased. That's me just Whoa. strictly speaking from music. I feel the same way. I'm like, am I not? I'm thinking to myself, hold on. 
Am I not being critical enough? What am I missing? No, the only thing I can criticize is Ali being repetitive sometimes. But with tracks like this and the last one where he repeated a bit, it was fine because I feel like he was striking the message home a lot. Like, it's alright to repeat yourself when it's, there's a huge driving point which like just really like melds with me. There's only like one point in this album where the repetitiveness got to me, but other than that, flawless. There's nothing more that I can say is bad about this album. There's it's, no filler tracks. It's like 95% fucking amazing. There's nothing I'd remove. No. And I want to say something critical. I'm trying to find something on first listen. Like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Ali should have had a choir. He shouldn't have sung that part. <laughs> Ali can't sing for shit. But I, can't, <laughs> I can't find it. I like, I, like, I like the line. There was a good line about, I want to be like, Kanye West, Consequence, a GLC. Yeah. And the, the, like, shout out to Spaceship. And then he continues the next line of on Spaceship, like about being getting out of school. Oh, I missed that line. So like, it was basically an ode to that song, but like repeating the line. It was fucking really smart. And then he did the line about being with E and Z, like Eric, like, oh, Eleftheris and Zach. And then the next line after that. So like, there's some real fucking cool lines in there, man. Like that, that's all I got. I would have missed so much more shit. I got a rock hard dick the, right You now. know, this is that, nah, this, you gotta be fucking with these. There's, off, after this album, there's no reason, unless, unless, there's no reason they shouldn't be one of the most impactful, relevant uh, hip hop acts in this city, if not this country. If not the world. Well, let's take it one step at a time because I feel the same, <laughs> I feel the same about Jungle Beats. I you know? honestly feel like that if Fantano heard this, would be something he'd like. I feel like he would like this album. I feel like Mike Seatown would love this album. I feel like I want to get their opinion because maybe I'm missing something. Well, exactly. They're going to, like, I'm really bad with lyrics. I, straight up, I'm in, more into beats. So seeing someone actually digest this better than we do and just seeing their points on it. Production wise, yeah, that's the album's highlight. I think that's the album's highlight, the production. Mm. But it's a, it's a close second. It's not far off. Ali's still lyrically. fucking. Ali fucking does his thing on yeah, this album. Yeah, especially man. on that last track. Yeah, man. Fuck Tying last that two. album concept in. Mm. One of that's it. One of my favorite albums of the year so far. Same. I can definitely sing this. Be my Jungle Beats, guys. You got to be fucking with them. If you've made it this far with the video, go support them. Check their shit out. Like, oh. there's no reason. If we have this many followers in our platforms, there's no reason they shouldn't. Every single one of you who watch this should go over and and fuck with them. If you like the album, that is. Hell yeah. Like them on SoundCloud, love their pages, listen to their music. If, you ever, if you're ever around in Melbourne or nearby, check them out live. They're fucking, they're fucking amazing live. Like, this is essentially one of the biggest reasons we started this whole thing. Um, to ha give Australia more of an identity within hip-hop. And with these guys coming through, I think they can definitely help. I just want this shit on my computer so I can listen to it again. <laughs> i to wait a while. Yeah, internet, yeah. Fucking hell, Great man. job. Both of you, great job. Um, really team. impressed. Whole team. Yeah, the whole team. Excuse me. You're Fuck right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. This shout is out really Ali. Good. Shout out E. Shout out Zach. Yep. Anyone else we miss. This is... Bad point in this album. It's a whole group of people working together. And uh, I don't think this is the only thing they're going to be releasing. I hear something else might be coming. Because this album is supposed to be called Jake... Uh, I Love Jake Gyllenhaal or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we might be doing a round two for their second body of work very soon. Bro, if so, that's amazing. Because I feel like with this 10-track LP alone, it's enough to last them for the next two years. But obviously I want them to pump out music as soon as possible because when you're a, a younger artist and not much of a fan base, you want to be pushing out a bit more. But like, it's that good, I feel like, that I could, I could be fine for that long. Fuck with him. Uh, fuck with him. Jungle Beats, uh, Jungle Beats, fuck with him. Ali motherfucking Belmont. The Ghost, LP. Hello, Theris, the delivery boy. <laughs> Call me young Jack Frost in the summertime Smart the light is up one time Wanna see him shine Say blazing, stay hot even in the winter time Every time I drop a track, it's winter time It's gold medal time Cry angle of this rap shit Sip on the phone like it was 9-6 uh.